This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters for this awesome cast interview spinoff spectacular. We're still rolling there. And uh, please check out all the past interviews, all kinds of stuff happening on Oscast.net. So many great, great interviews we've had in this first, uh, not even a year of uh, doing this version of the show. And thank you so much. Everybody has been checking it out. Subscribe to the awesome chat or just awesome cast or the Sorgatron Media Master Feed over at iTunes. Uh, and a lot of those are over at uh, Stitcher Speaker, iHeartRadio, uh, as well as our YouTube feed. And even on the Facebook, we're putting these videos on as well. Whatever you prefer. Uh, so uh, today we have a return to the awesome cast universe, of course. Now I've done uh, several podcasts with this gentleman, uh, not just here, but also with uh, our clients over at Seclair uh, at seclair.com. You can find out a couple of uh, uh, great talks that we had with him. Um, and we have on the line Dr. Matt Keener of Black Blackbird Health joining us today. How are you doing today, Matt? Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so we've had you on before talking about some of your other ventures uh, over on the Awesome Cast, uh, but you have this new one called Blackbird Health. Um, I've heard a little bit from it of it from uh, colleagues in the health industry, and uh, it, it sounds like it's got a really interesting take on healthcare and technology and kind of bringing it together. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing over there? Yeah. So um, what we're doing is looking to serve families. Um, in particular, families who um, are hit with, um, you know, sort of the, the darkness that can come in with mental health care and um, mental illness in particular, and trying to, um, you know, we're still working on the, the one-liner, but, but basically providing service teams who can help uh, shed a little bit of light on the situation and where their next steps might be, whether that's, um, you know, getting better medical care through things like telepsychiatry or um, with their own PCPs, or if that's getting social support in the community, um, but providing uh, first and foremost a service to help people and um, in, in a field where you know, we've somehow gotten used to being okay with crappy service and uh, in, in, in a place where it's needed the most. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, we were talking about like, I mean, everybody's used to, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody's out there had a, had a battle with mental health and, 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 you know, finding help with that. But we've all been in the hospital at one point or another. And we know how that is not the most user friendly of experience. Right. And, uh, you know, how does that compare for somebody maybe that hasn't gone down that road uh, yet in their lives? Um, you, you know, is it is it different than what we deal with with our PCPs and the regular health plans? Um, like what, what does the landscape look at look like currently? Yeah. So, so you can imagine if, um, if the experience of going to a PCP is, um, you know, the, 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 the baseline, which, which itself is, uh, frequently atrocious, right? You're used to, going and driving all the way across town to sit in a crowded waiting room um, with a bunch of sick people that um, with staff who may or may not be communicating with the doctor um, to spend a rapid amount of time um, being assessed by a nurse and then the physician. And so it's, it's similar to that baseline um, uncomfortable experienced. <laughs> uh, but then you add in often um, the fact that you're uh, almost going in the back door, that there's that there's a separate building that's the mental health facility um, carrying with it stigma. And um, then you're looking at even uh, longer wait times. The average, uh, the average person in between access between a sort of primary care and accessing things like child psychiatry 
is that eight weeks, um, two whole months, right, that they're having to wait during one of the worst times in their lives. Um, so the wait times are longer. The um, the face to face time is frequently even uh, even less uh, once you add it all up, and um, and then the then you're given um, you're given this uh, you may or may not be told what your diagnosis is, which is a fascinating thing that I. Uh, have realized <laughs> being in the field, you, you know, you, you just, uh, because yeah, it sounds like 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 I you know from the people I talked with that that have experienced this and talking with um, doctors on both sides because you go through several sessions because as a doctor you have to sit there and kind of assess and it could take several hours of discussion to get to the root of the problem right to figure out what what it actually is correct correct yeah and and then um, and what's landed upon is frequently as you put it what it is right what the um, in a space where, you know, if you crashed your car, um, and I, I look at things like depression, anxiety, and even things like uh, psychosis to some extent are like, uh, accident, these, these major accidents or crashes, uh, for our brains and ourselves that have known quantifiable risk factors that can actually be avoided. Um, you know, you, you crash your car. You don't the, 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 you don't go to the collision mechanic and um, um, expect that one little spot treatment is going to fix it. Let alone diagnose it, right? Like, why did you crash the car going around the icy curve in the dark with the one ball tire that you should have changed the oil on four months ago, with kids yelling in the back seat, with poor lighting, and um, etc. Like there's the, the it in that situation is not, um, yeah, sure, I could diagnose a broken axle, but uh, to prevent the problem from happening again, we may want to look at this, the broader combination of, of risk factors that are in people's environment that they're exposing themselves to over and over again. Um, and it seems like you know we talked about emote in the past, of course. And it seems like you're you're trying to bring in that that diagnosis, so it's more than just that hour. Because I remember the, the the application work on the past was was getting that idea and getting that feedback throughout their day to day lives as well. Um, so with Blackbird Health, like how are you looking to apply technology to kind of make this experience better and and, and I imagine more efficient? Yeah, good question. So um, with the moat, what we had been focusing on was the, the quantification of one's emotional state. And we didn't really get into what to do about that. Um, mm -hmm. And also the, the approach was very, uh, was a technological approach. So it was, what is the piece of technology with that could be the blinker light on the dashboard, as it were, to give you a sense of uh, where you were. And um, and there's a lot of, um, there's movement towards that in a couple different ways. So even you know, if somebody has a jawbone up bracelet, they can use a combination of that plus some mood tracking to get some indicators of that. There's a company called Ginger Aya, which has some good predictors uh, around that. There's other companies that are um, from the technology side, are making gains there. But what we're focused on is the overall, um, once people get into that spot where they would like help, like it doesn't, um, they know they're stuck. And it doesn't, it may matter to an employer or to, uh, a managed care plan to be able to sort of predict who's at risk for getting stuck. And certainly at the individual level, there's interest in helping people avoid get stuck. But um, where at Blackbird Health, what we're looking to do is, you know, once people find themselves in that position, either for themselves or for a loved one, where they can, they can 
see the different factors adding up and they want to get to that next spot. What is the next place I need to do? Next place I need to get to. What's my next target to land on to get myself out of this position? And importantly, getting people to uh, to assist you um, on a team to assist you through that process um, that doesn't require entering into um, you know the kingdom of mental health, as it were. Um, it's you know to some extent it's like this um, walled fortress where a lot of the help lies. Um, that in order to get in the door, you need to let them tattoo you on the chest with this this uh, black mark, as it were. You know whether that's a diagnosis of depression or bipolar addiction, which um, you know carries with it the stigma and um, often repercussions. Um, uh, you know, one point. Uh, so I have a mild sleep disorder, and it's well treated with medication. And um, the at one point I had a real hard time getting insurance because of that, and because insurance is so much that I end up paying for it out of pocket anyway. Um, you know that that's a mild scenario, but there, there's people who are impacted by um, you know, there's help that they need and want that they need to enter into this big formal system to get in a way that can lock them lock them down. And, and I know one thing that you guys are talking about, uh, you know, some of the discussions, we, as I mentioned to you beforehand, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, some people, some of my colleagues have been down there uh, with you guys uh, talking about some of the technologies that you guys are, are kind of uh, applying to to make that, that process a little better, at least on the doctor communications side. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know uh, telemedicine, uh, or teletherapy, uh, I forget which the official term for it is, um, you know, uh, things like that and other tools that you guys are finding that, that, that it doesn't seem like healthcare is really taken advantage of as, say, a small company like me that's using Slack. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, so Slack's a good one, um, not for necessarily for patient communication, but um, um, however, it, it it's almost beside the point um, in that. Um, so one of the, um, uh, actually a couple of the, the the people who've really informed our, our thinking process um, are in the field of operations and in particular uh, military operations and, and um, special ops. And um, two, two team members and, um, you know, who, who consult with us. And, you know, it's... Um, the technology becomes, um, people tend to think of a technology first approach and forgetting that technology is just the use of the scientific method uh, towards solving a problem. And the so leading with service, but a technology that's that's furthering that and whether that technology is, uh, you know, a walkie talkie or, uh, a, a, uh, SAS web-based teletherapy portal, uh, isn't, isn't, isn't as important as, um, people are making it out to be. So, um, that said to your question, focusing in, in on that piece, um, because it it helps unlock the rest of it. Um, you know, I think there's some really exciting developments in particular um, as a first off, just with telemedicine as a as a field. And so the ability to use things like we're doing right now, where um, uh, you know we're using Google Hangouts and uh, which is a web portal based. so there's no, um, you know, for the people who aren't as, as tech forward, it's, it's 
Uh, you didn't have to download anything in particular. If you have Google Chrome and running Google Chrome as a browser, you don't need to download something else and run it and install it. It's just there. And so um, there are uh, telemedicine portals that are um, that are secure in a way that is HIPAA compliant. And so your medical information remains um, contained within the sort of medical data universe. Uh, importantly, which you can access, I think is a, is a key piece. Um, so using a web-based telehealth portal is one of the main things that we're doing. Um, another one is using secure some secure messaging. So, you know, the um, SMS messages are not medically secure. So people do text with, um, there's some doctor's offices who are texting or people texting their doctor. Um, and but those those messages can be, inter uh, can be, um, they're less secure. Mm -hmm. And, um, Although interestingly, people, um, if you're okay with doing that with your doctor and you and your doctor have a, um, have a conversation about that and discuss the risks and benefits and you, you say it's okay, that's okay. Now, it doesn't mean that your doctor is going to do that, but I think that's one of the things that I've gleaned is that it, a lot of this, it's, it's up to, um, uh, you know, it's a matter of risk benefits and people are informed and, and they're interested in, in uh, trying out some new solutions, even if their doctor doesn't have the, the tech necessarily, it's still possible. Um, but the tech's now getting cheap enough. Um, some of the other things that are more forward that we're doing are internally is exploring um, software like, like the, the platform Slack, which for anybody at home who, who uh, is even running a small business, or maybe is like a has a community organization that they run, or you know anything where you're trying to get some work done with two or more people, highly highly recommended. It's what seven dollars a month, and uh, it's it's revolutionizing um, business, and and soon to move into. Um, I heard that there's there's actually some Slack commercials that are going on for private use um, because it will, you know, I think soon everybody will probably have their own private account. Yeah, and I think um, that's it, it's a kind of its own social network in a way. I mean, we use it here for Sogertron Media and a lot of our productions, and we don't pay anything. Now I know I understand that like that seven dollars. I think it's seven dollars per user, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that adds a certain level of, of security. Um, and that's that's when you look at the medical field and the cost there, that's nothing in comparison, right? But it's easy to get started or start one for a community, like maybe if you want one for 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 a neighborhood community or something like that. Um, I know there's a lot of those happening. Like I hear like Austin, Texas has a Slack community, right? Um, nice. And and, yeah. and, and and do you find now now the thing that I've noticed, uh, you know, working uh, with the field you know, with uh, you know trying to apply the messaging, social media, some other like tech as far as the getting the word out there. Um, I don't want to say I've, I've, I've had a resistance, but there's there's certainly like people that aren't um, able to upkeep. And especially, you know, we're talking like maybe doctors that have been doing this for, you know, 20, 20 25 years and, 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 and this is all brand new. Are you finding an issue or resistance for some of these uh, doctors to adopt some of this newer technology? Or are they kind of seeing the light that this can actually make things a little easier and more efficient? I think... Um when the when the priorities are clear, doctors are fine with it. And by that I mean if it's if it's clear that there's something that's seeking to better serve the patients and um, in a, in a reasonable way that um, you know. If, that, that doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, I think most, certainly most doctors would be okay with that. The, the challenge is often they're trapped in structures that they don't have control over is one. Um, 
you know, their healthcare system says, no, we're, we're not doing that. Um, uh, sorry. Or um, they're in a small practice and the, the adoption, uh, you know, the adoption cost or the, the adoption curve on it would just be pretty high. And I think that's a very real thing. And, I, and we were in a place where we, um, uh, the, the Blackbird Health Clinic within Blackbird Health uh, we are looking to continuously innovate, but but doing so means having fewer clients and also having uh, patients in a in a new way. So within this the whole of Blackbird Health, you know, we're looking to serve these families, but uh, that broadly happens in two two ways. You know, one of which is through a medical clinic that specializes in in care transitions and short term care, and then the other is through health programs based in local community organizations and um, other partner organizations who are uh, running programs. And um, so the um, within our clinic, it's it can be a much more innovative affair. But it also, you know, I, I, I really give kudos to our patients because they've got a, it's not just on the part of the physicians, right? But when you have, um, when you're messaging somebody, you, I mean, you would think, uh, well, why can't my doctor just message me and ask me when it's good for me to meet with them? You know, message pops up. Sounds great, Mike. When would you like to meet next? Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 you wouldn't believe how much anxiety that causes. <laughs> like the, 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 they actually, there, there are people who actually just do much rather want to be told you're going to be here at this particular time. Here's your appointment reminder, uh, thing, but the, the, so the mechanics, the mechanics are kind of still being worked out, but I think that's, um, Importantly, with technology, um, as mentioned, it's not just the it's not just the the thing; it is the process. And if a, if so, what we are trying to do is develop a process whereby um, we know the care that we're delivering is. Um, it's better than what's out there and that's still pretty crappy. And we want to know what is it about it that you don't like so that we know what to improve right. and, um, and lead and leading with that. Um, Cause there's not much, uh, I guess, user testing and customer service in the medical industry at, at a whole. Right. There's there's kind of there's the direction of solving the problem and the rest gets sorted out. Right. Yeah. And there's so many fixed there's so many fixed elements that the the points around which the improvement takes place are um, are known. Like and you um Whereas for us, the, the whole thing is, um, uh, you know, we're we're al- trying to alight this darkness that's where no care exists, or where the, the care that exists is so poor that um, even um, that that there there's flexibility for what people want in there. And, and figuring out what is it that, that people want and um, and why is it that I get much better uh, service from um, the hair salon I go to than, <laughs> than from my medical clinic uh, that I go to. I want to ask about, so I'm looking through the site, and uh, you have a, a community challenge called Blackbird 29. Can you tell us what that's about? Yeah, so that was a... Um, it's a 29 day program that we ran um, and we're going to be running another one uh, in March. 
um, that was um, a a means of creating community and and in particular community where people could get information support and accountability in in their health and in particular learn some um, strategies that that they can do on the day-to-day to to reduce the risk for um, things like return incidents of depression, anxiety, um, and overall just kind of help them feel calmer, uh, happier, and and more connected to the people around them. And so, uh, uh, so it's an online program, 29 days. Um, there's a men's program and a women's program, uh, $75 for the month, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And, um, uh, both and it's a mix of begins online and then it ends with a um, in in real life meetups so um, also a way of, of bringing together people who may not other otherwise have community um, of sort of support of others in their life um, um, one of the things I found it, it, it came out of um, seeing kids here up at a clinic where I work and consult to um, where the children um, and young adults who are here um, and, th- and that's our focus by the way sort of young adults um, so um, I say 14 to 40 but uh, the whole kid out range of uh, between puberty and feeling like you got this every <laughs> in the middle um, seeing these kids they're here they're running groups um, their community, you know, they have a bit of community on this residential program, and but they're not allowed to talk to their friends because that'd be a bad influence. Uh, then when they leave here, they're not allowed to take the numbers of the kids that they met here because they they're a bad influence. Well, uh, what what gives? Like you're taking people during the prime years of their life where they should have social connection and community wrenching them from that to put them in this place where everybody's labeled uh, a weirdo and, you know, mentally ill and then told like, Oh, be friends with these people. But now when you leave here, Oh, you don't want to be friends with those people. Like what, what's mm-hmm. that? You know, like, mm-hmm. what about providing a community um, much like, you know, the recovery communities where it can spin uh, all levels of care. Um you could go to a, uh, a hospital and if um, you're struggling with addiction, you could go to an NA group in the hospital, but you could also go to an NA group in your church. You could also go to an NA group down the corner. Um, and uh, But you also have to be in an NA group and that's their own particular, uh, you know, they, they have their own mechanics and, and it's a, uh, um, uh, that's it. That's its own thing, and I think mm-hmm. not 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 to talk down on NA at all because it's it's a it's a great resource for people and for community, but it's 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 also not for everybody. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So you're you're trying to find something that has the rules, has something you know as as established and, and works as well as that uh, kind of all around for for this community. Yeah, and well, and and not just as well, but better. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, not to um, you know. AA, NA, the, the success rate's not great. It's 5 to 10%, depending on the studies you're looking at. Um, when in fe- um, and, and mind you, addiction isn't our, isn't our sole focus. Um, and uh, it, you know, we, we focus more on general uh, things like depression, anxiety, um, but also trauma, um, addiction. The, but more so focusing on... Um, resilience, getting the job you want, being able to go out on dates successfully, like what are the positive outcomes that people are looking to achieve in their lives? Um, uh, And, you know, you have evidence-based strategies that we know work across a broad range of conditions. So for instance, mindfulness meditation is a core um, pillar of what we do. brain training strategies, uh, utilizing the sort of body mind system. So for instance, like when people have, um, uh, 
good example. One of one of the, the people working on the team hurt a knee, and they uh, all of a sudden their knees and inst- becomes unstable. They're getting anxious about things they wouldn't usually ever get anxious about because their entire vestibular system, like their entire brain system, the nervous system is built on a shaky foundation where, and it, it throws our head uh, out of whack. And there's, there's specific drills and skills that that come from sports psychology that can, um, we know improve, uh, things, uh, improve anxiety and, um, cognitive strategies taken from CBT. Um, just sort of nuts and bolts foundational stuff mm-hmm. that um, in a mashup of sorts. Um, awesome. So, you know, uh, kind of give me the uh, uh, kind of a layout. If people want to get involved, people want to check it out, where can they uh, learn about Blackbird Health? What's What options are open to them immediately here? And, of course, I know you guys are building something uh, bigger and grander on the back end as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, in the in the near term, you know, if there's any if there's families that are looking to get uh, sort of shed a light in the darkness and and better understand some next steps that they can take in, in getting help for a loved one, um, they can email us at intake at Blackbird Health. So you can go to the website blackbirdhealth.com. Uh, email us at intake i n t a k e at blackbirdhealth.com. Um, there's also um, uh, a link to the site where we, well, as mentioned, we're going to be running another um, 29-day program, and that'll be starting up in March. So they can just go to the website there, um, Blackbird Health forward slash Blackbird 29. And um, we're also on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'll be running some Periscope events coming up. <laughs> Great. That's another fun one to check out, right? Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Matt Keener. I encourage you to go check out the website, sign up, uh, at least for the newsletter, follow him on Twitter to get updates, and also uh, great talks uh, uh, as well. Um, I believe the local TEDx you, you spoke at, I think, is where I first uh, came across you. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, so go check out the, over on the TED Talks websites and some good talks with uh, our friends over at Seclair as well at seclair.com. And just look up his name. You'll find a lot of fun stuff over there. Thank you so much for joining me, uh, Dr. Matt Keener. Uh, anything else you want to uh, part on? Uh, a- a- any words of wisdom for anybody who may be dealing with uh, uh, mental issues right now and trying to uh, uh, you know, get, get past it? Yeah, you know, you're, you're just, you're, 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 it sounds trite, but you're really not alone. I mean, two, 24%, like a quarter of the country, well, there's the globe there, but there we go. <laughs> quarter of the country's on psych meds. Yeah. One, one type of, the, the um, there's help that's out there. There, it doesn't need to be meds. It, there's a lot of, resources in your community that that can be helpful there are people going through what you've gone through and um if we don't know who if we can't find them or we don't know them offhand we help find them like that's we're just um yeah like there, there's people out there who can help you access and uh there's a light out there you know just gotta look out for it thank you it's so much out. Thank you so much. Check out uh, uh, everything else over at awesomecast.net. We'd love if you subscribe to it wherever you like to get your podcast, video shows, however the case may be. And please, if you if you dig everything, if you're uh, liking the value we're bringing, or if you have any ideas um, that uh, of people we should talk to, comments about people we've talked to in the past who should be on the show, uh, questions if we've announced them in, in, in advance, uh, go over to awesomecast.net. Check out all of the links over there for supporting the show, contacting the show everywhere on social media. Uh, thank you so much to my awesome guest, Dr. Keener. Thank you have been our awesome audience, and please have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.